Hey everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team for our next installment of our twice monthly video blog and podcast series. I am joined again by Chris Haggerty, who is one of our agents on the Around Town team. A uh, longtime friend now, builder, renovator, flipper, kind of seen it all throughout the past 30 years, the ups and downs of the market. And today we want to cover our aging housing population. I'm like, no, we're not talking about grandma and grandpa. <laughs> We're literally talking about, Chris, the homes you built in the 90s and early 2000s are now 20, 15, 20, 25 years old. Yeah. Right? And they're seeing their age. Styles have changed. You know, we're no longer oak cabinets. We're white cabinets. Yeah. Right? Um, different, you know, backsplash colors have changed. Um, tiles have changed. Um, floor plans have changed yeah. you know, over the decades. Room definition versus open floor plan. Absolutely. We're yep. not using formal living rooms anymore. They're offices. We're not, you know, barely using dining rooms. So right. people want more of that communal living open floor plan. So, but we've, the majority of our housing population, and again, I say well, housing population, I mean, the physical structures, the sticks that you built over the past three decades, they're getting old. Yep. And how do we market, prepare them for market best, right? So, go on a listing appointment and you walk into a home built 20 years ago and they've taken care of it. Mm -hmm. It's clean, it's neat, it's not dinged up, but the kitchen is 20 years old, the bathrooms are 20 years old. Let's assume they've kept up with the mechanicals, right? They've replaced what they've needed to. Let's, right. just, let's assume we're just talking aesthetics more than anything else. Let's right. assume the meat and potatoes of the house are, are in great shape. Where are we putting our money to prepare this home? Because we're in a flat market. Mm -hmm. It's hard to recoup dollars in to get dollars out. And it's also hard to talk to a seller saying, hey, I know you're a 3, 3,000 square foot home. I know you bought this for 600,000. The market depreciated. It's worth 500,000. Yep. Right? And it's really, that's a big pill for somebody to swallow. Sure. So and then they, they got to put money into that. Then they got to put money into it. And you know what? It still could be worth $500,000. Right. But what are our best odds? Where can we put money? How extensive of work do we need? And obviously that's a loaded question depending on the house. But what comes to mind? Maybe like the top three things in your mind that you'd walk into a house like you know what, Mr. Seller, we're gonna put our money here, here, and here. Yep, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be kitchens, baths, paint, trim. Yeah, I'd, I'd put paint and trim in the same category. Let's break. Um, let's break it up. Let's start in the kitchen, right? Because they're yep. saying I gotta gut this thing. You don't have to gut. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the kitchens that we were doing 25, 30 years, 35 years ago are still good cabinetry. Um, you know, if you've got like a wood edge. For like a top or a corian top, you may want to put in uh, quartz or, or granite. Um, do a backsplash if you didn't have one before or update or the one that you've got. Right. Paint the cabinets. Um, clean them, paint them. Um, you, have to, you have to freshen it up. Right. You don't have to replace it. If you can replace it, fantastic. Right. You know, go with the, the white uh, shaker door, the quiet close yep. doors and drawers, you know, go. You can even change out the hinges on the doors too for quiet clothes. You can do that to too. Do that. Change the hardware. Yeah. Um, just freshen it up a little bit. Um, flooring, unfortunately, if you've got tile in your kitchen, that's kind of a no-no today. Yeah. Um, get hardwood in there. Um, if you can trick out, if you have an island, you can trick that out. You know, maybe put shiplap on the back of it rather than that flat panel that it, the kids used to kick. Yep. Um, just freshen things up a little bit. So take. Try to take. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but ten thousand dollars goes a long take way. Take it as far as you can take it. Sure, appliances. Yeah. Yep. Um, what about redoing the hardwood floors? Right, if they haven't been redone in twenty years, odds are even if you didn't have pets, it's a hard one because yeah. you know because they're not getting that money back per se. They're not, but people, you know, it. You want to differentiate yourself in the market. You want to you want to be the house that people want to go to see. You want to be the house that looks great online, looks great in a, in a video that you want to go to the open house or you want to see that's that's the first one you go to yeah. if we're going out and looking at three or four um so the floors have to look good the it's it, a it's a cost of business yeah it's really it really is i mean it'll sell faster which will net you more right because if we sit on the market more you're probably taking a reduction right right or somebody's going to lowball you yep so bathrooms refresh floors and paint um bathrooms probably similar type of refresh as the kitchen i assume right i mean yeah, um, unfortunately, bathrooms tend to date themselves really quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tile that's hot today, like right now, uh, the the hardwood tile that we're seeing is that gonna is that gonna date us right now? Or you know, we're we're changing metals. Um, you know, we're going from the uh, 
the bronze the, or the gold. The bronze or, or uh, the, what is the it? Gold. The gold. The, the stuff that you guys put in every single house in the world. Not gold. Um, no. The we're going to brush nickel now. Brush nickel. But but is brush nickel going to date itself to now? Well, we're, we're starting to see a lot of rose gold in some stuff now. So it's right. almost a, it's a turn. You know, rose gold is different than the brass or the, the gold that you guys have put in before. But yeah, there's some there's some variations that have already crept up right through the brush nickel phase. Maybe maybe that's phasing out. Yeah, whenever we're doing a, whenever I'm doing a, a bath, I try and stick to white fixtures. You know, the white toilet, the white tub, um, and you know, oddly, chrome. Yeah, it's it's not the hottest metal, but it never goes out of style. What do you do about that tub? You guys built these back in the day. These giant bathtub. You'd have a shower, which wasn't too big. Now we all want bigger tiled showers, right? Right. But you guys were building these luxurious giant tub jacuzzis, enclosures, jacuzzi, yep. tiled out. I mean, it Platform. Took, took up way too much space. Yeah. You know, but that was the end thing, right? Everyone thought And how many gonna, times did it get used? Twice, maybe. Right. And the kids were probably using it, not even the adult. Right. Right. So what do you do about that? I mean, is it worth ripping that out and putting a beautiful freestanding? Yeah. The the vessel tubs now, yeah. the the standing you know not a not a cast iron tub but that large tub right. in front of a not window built that's into anything yeah that's the hottest thing right now and you know I, I think about those things you know that's in style now and cloth tubs you know way back when right freestanding sure. tub what kind of things if someone's looking to maybe a lot of our clients they engage us years in advance of selling right mm -hmm. andy my kids are graduating college in four years i'm staying here or they're graduating high school in four years i'm not going anywhere till we're out of here because the kids are I'm not going to pull the kids out of school but we want to do some renovations. We want to enjoy them a little bit, mm -hmm. which imagine that, right? Not just doing it for sale. Sure. What should we do to enjoy it that will still be relevant when we go to sell? And in, in so much, I think, of what is relevant now has been timelessly relevant, right? You go into old Victorians. They had white cabinets mm -hmm. and big white claw foot tubs. Right. And now we're doing these freestanding tubs and white cabinets and subway tiles as old as time, you know. Those classic ones, what would you advise somebody to put in if they wanted to stay classic, neutral, timeless. Natural stones um, always seem timeless. The subway always seems timeless. Um, you can mix it up with a border or something like that. But um, as far as the fixtures go, I would do a vessel tub. It's an updated version of the claw, claw foot. Right. Um, you know, it's actually a cost savings when you think about it. You, you can. You know, maybe the price tag going in is a little high, seven hundred or nine hundred for a tub. Right. But you think of a whirlpool is going to be that at least, and then you build a platform, then you tile the back platform. Yeah. So, it's a cost savings. It's timeless. A nice big shower. Um, I don't think you can be too big on a shower these days. You can be. Well, you can be yes, too big. It can be absurdly big. But you know, there's there's that thing that people are doing where the whole room is a shower. You know, you you have the shower head in the corner and the drain in the center of the room. Right. That's a problem because how do you how do you keep it warm? Right. You know, you're standing True. in the corner and you're freezing. The water's on as hot as it can be, but you're still cold. Yeah. So something that's four or five feet square, um, tiled out completely. Top tiled down. out. Nice glass door on it. That's that's timeless. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Um, people will be happy with that now, ten years down the road. Yeah. Um, cool. Very cool. Now, my favorite thing, and we do this, we've done this in every single flip home that we've done, is trim to the. <laughs> I mean, crown molding, shadow boxes, chunky floor mold, you know, floor yep. base molding, and it's something that. You know, you have to be a real craftsman to install it correctly, right? You can always know it's a homeowner special when the cuts are straight in the middle and they're just trying to... Or the crown's it, upside or down. Or the crown's upside down. We've seen that. <laughs> um, but that goes a long way. Yeah. Right? Crown molding. People, it's, it's something so simple. Yeah. But gleaming white crown molding and trim in places and b-board and use properly. Or you've done a lot in the ceilings with shiplap yep. or accent walls. You know, some of those accent walls might go out of style, but it's something from a seller's perspective that really is not a whole lot of cost, mm -hmm. right? It's more labor-based because all the right. cuts and stuff. Yep. But we're doing it, I mean, that that's like the trim package and, and the houses that you flipped have been far beyond and people come in like their, their mouths. The trim, different than the accent walls, the trim is something that I, I don't think people will automatically know is what is different. But they'll walk into a house that I've just finished and we've got crown, we've got, you know, five inch crown in every room bathrooms, walk-in closet, yeah. everywhere. Um, they may not 
notice it immediately, but it gives them a better feeling. Yeah, it's, it's a finished, it's a quality it's, home. It's it's, it's well done. Yeah. There's there's just an an intangible that they pick up immediately. Whereas in another home where it's you know flat wall meets flat ceiling, they don't notice it. They yeah. don't they don't have that feeling. Yeah. Um, the accent walls, like you say, are those are going to date us? They've got to. Yeah, they've got to. Um, you know, just like the half round windows of the '90s, you know, people look at those and it dates that period. Right. Um, but the trim package, I love doing it. I've I've probably coped miles of crown at Easily. this point. Easily. Um, but, it, it, it's appreciated though, and from a realtor's yeah. perspective, you can go in, and it's something like to your point where a buyer might not initially walk in and go, oh my God, trim, 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 trim everywhere. Mm -hmm. But from a real estate perspective, from a realtor's perspective, when you walk in with a client, it's something we point out. Sure. And so guys, look look at the finish work here. Look at the care that either this builder or this homeowner has taken. And at the end of the day, not only are we trying to sell and find our clients or represent the sellers and sell what they've done, it's really selling a pride of ownership. Right. And which gives great peace of mind to any buyer that wow, they've taken great care of this or they've taken great care to get this ready for sale knowing that this is what a buyer wants. This right. is what, you know, it goes a long way in selling a house. Well, and a good painter too. And, yeah. you know, people will automatically think, well, I can take care of the painting. The difference between a homeowner job and a professional job, and we've got some great people that we can night, refer to. Night and, and day. It's, it's worlds different. Yeah. Um, and that goes on the outside as well. I mean, yeah. Folks, I'm telling you, if you've got wood rot trim anywhere. Get it fixed. The, your sill trim could easily raise red flags to a buyer that you also need new windows. Right. Right. Your windows could be fine, but everything around it's rotted. Get that fixed before you put it on the market. And that can happen in 10 years from a, a brand home. new home. If it wasn't it, prepped properly yeah. when it was first put up, it can be. And, and if, you, if you have the ability, put the composite trim in now. Don't mm -hmm. mess with the wood. It's just going to rot again in five to 10 years, depending on how your gutter system is and things like that. Mm -hmm. Really easy, affordable things you can take care of. And if you can't do these, these, these big face lifts in the kitchen and the baths, Try to do the trim, paint everything, try to do the floors, get rid of the wood rot, get rid of anything that raises question marks to a buyer. Sure. Right? They can come in and say, wow, this kitchen's kind of dated, but man, is it taken care of? I can deal with this for now. Right. Right? I mean, everyone's got a budget, everyone's got a pension for financial pain of what they want to shell out after they might have lost a ton of money in the market anyway. Well, you've got to look at you've got to look at your own house through a buyer's eyes. Yeah. You've got to Say, you know, what would I be thinking if I saw this? Do you, do you see a house that's well maintained, maybe slightly dated, but well maintained and cared for? That someone loved that home, or do you see something that, you know, I don't care, I'm out of here. Right. If you were the buyer, you're like, ah, I'm not so sure I'd even buy this today. Right. And to that point, you know, from the buyer's eyes, guys, listen, hire a real estate agent. If it's not us, that's okay. Just but hire somebody who's going to give you that devil's advocate view of your home. That's going to come in. And don't think that that agent is knocking your home or your collection of dolls or your car collection. Right. It's not personal. Our job is to get your home ready so you can make as much money as possible. Right. I've had plenty of sellers sit there and look at me and say, why are you, why are you making me feel so bad? Right. I said, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to earn you as much money as possible. I'm going to walk you through the process to get there. It's a, it's a hard story to it's tell hard. sometimes when you, you've got someone who... The house has dropped value in the last 10, 15 years. And they've, they already, may, they've already invested so much money over the years, right? right? I mean, it's just, and they're like, oh my God, I've already done so much. You want me to do more? Yeah. By the time we net out of the deal, they may be underwater. It's possible. It's very possible. And, and, and you know, to your point, you're a realtor, a builder, tons of experience, and you even get emotional when we would flip things, right? So you knew better intellectually, right? but you would become emotional. So it happens to everybody, even people in the business, right? right. No one likes to be told, what we've done or haven't done is the right thing or the wrong, well, they like to be told it's the right thing, but they don't want to be told it's the wrong thing or something needs to be changed, right? Right. So it happens to all of us. Take it with a grain of salt from your agent. Our job is to net you as much money as possible in as little period of time as possible. Absolutely. Good. Chris, thanks for joining us again. I appreciate it. My Thank name you, is Andy. Andy Sachs with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team, and we look forward to working with you soon.